Subscribe and turn on notifications for more videos. What's up guys, my name is Mr. Jman and in today's video we're going to talk about the failed Belgian colonization of the Philippines. So let's get started. In the mid-19th century, Belgium was a newly independent country. They successfully revolted against Dutch rule in the Belgian Revolution from August 25th, 1830 to July 21st of 1831, which resulted in gaining its independence. And the rise of the Industrial Revolution in Europe at the time, Belgium became one of the rising economic and industrial power. This was broadened when in 1847, the Liberal Party took over and expanded modern industrialization and commercial trades around the country, creating trade relations with other European countries, establishing banks banks, infrastructures, and other business sectors, which drove Belgiums from rural areas to cities like Antwerp, Liège, and the capital Brussels for more job opportunities. The country was ruled under a constitutional monarchy by Leopold I of Belgium, who has been king since independence. His reign ended when he passed away at the age of 74 on December 10, 1865. He was succeeded by Leopold II, where upon ascending the throne, he got interested in turning the country into a colonial power and wanted to expand Belgium's influence to Asia where he set his sights on buying the Philippines from Spain. Due to its rich resources and its location near Japan and China, which he desperately wanted to make trades with. So in 1866, the king ordered his ambassador in Madrid to start the negotiations with Spanish Queen Isabella II. However, the Belgian ambassador disobeyed Leopold's request because the parliament would not agree with the king's plan, mainly because the country didn't have a large navy and army to protect the island against other colonial powers. Besides, colonial competition within the European powers was very high at the time. Even if Belgium requested Britain, France, Germany, and other European empires for a colony of their own, they would not take them seriously not because they are a new nation but because of the neutrality pact signed by the great powers back in 1839, which they swore to protect Belgium's neutrality if the country were to be invaded. But despite all of these issues, Leopold II still wanted to turn the Philippines into a Belgian colony because upon hearing the ambassador's actions, the king removed him from his duties and replaced by his associate who was sympathetic to the project. He then tries to buy the territory without the Belgian parliament's knowledge by devising a plan to pay the Spanish 150 Belgian francs through filling the amount with loans taken from British banks. But the bank rejected funding Leopold's plan since he does not have the government's approval. However, Leopold II might have a good chance of getting the island because in September 1868, Isabella II and her government was deposed in a successful revolt led by General Juan Prim. Seeing this opportunity, the Belgian king opened a conversation with the new Spanish government, but the negotiations failed because he didn't have enough money to buy the territory. But with all of these failures, he had one more scheme that can eventually secede the Philippines under Belgium hands. This idea involves an overseas company who would take control of the archipelago within a 90-year concession policy while Belgium will be in charge with the finance and diplomatic cases. Once the contract expires, the Belgian government will give the Filipinos their full independence. But behind the scenes, however, this is just a diversion and in reality the company would just hand over the colony to Belgium. This idea is genius in paper but just like his previous ideas, this too failed. He did try to get the Philippines in 1898 during the Treaty of Paris after Spain's loss in the Spanish-American War. He sends orders to Belgian minister to the US, Court Lichtervin, to convince two Catholic priests to the US Congress to entrust the control of the Philippines to them and in turn, the island would become a Roman Catholic state. This is a disguise from Belgium to get the island because at the time, the US wasn't sure if they should annex the colony or not. But by the end of October of 1898, they were unable to send the proposal as the US Congress made the decision to annex the Philippines. Leopold, however, tried to convince the Spanish government to give the Philippines to them. Surprisingly, they considered surrendering it to Belgium rather than the Americans. Using this excuse, the King of the Belgians sent a telegram to the US government about his proposal without notifying the Belgian foreign minister, in which they rejected the deal and the King's dreams of an Asian colony soon faded to 
black. But his ambitions on colonialism became a reality when in 1885 at the Berlin Conference, the king acquired the Congo as a private-owned land called the Congo Free State. However, his control of the Congo was brutal, where he not only exploited the land's resources, but also forced the people to put into hard labor and punish those who didn't comply. And it is estimated that 10 million Congoese died during his reign over the Congo. The Congo Free State eventually ended in 1908, when the Belgian government forced the king to hand over control of the Congo to them, turning the territory as a Belgian colony. After 52 years of Belgian control, the land known today as the Democratic Republic of the Congo eventually gained independence in 1960. Thank you guys for watching this video and yes, uh, sorry for ending this in a sad note and I hope you guys uh, are fine, especially during, you know, uh, the protest that is happening right now around the world. So, you know, if you wanna support uh, diversity and equality, Go to the link in the description, I'll put a uh, donation uh, for supporting the cause because I donated, you know, uh, some money of it. So uh, I hope you guys, you know, uh, support, you know, uh, the movement also. And uh, if you don't have money to donate it, you know, that's okay. You could support it through spreading the message uh, on your social media accounts. And yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications, and uh, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Facebook. Be sure to check these videos that are popping right at now on the screen. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Stay safe. And yeah, see you guys in the next video. Bye.